to the Spooky Action at a Distance television show. I'm Kyle Finley, and today's topic will be the Electric Universe Theory, as presented by Keen Tiedemann over here. <laughs> How, how's, it, how's it going? Pretty good. Just pretty good, not great? No, it's, we could call it great, because I'm here with you. <laughs> and you're going to be an expert in this field, right? You bet. So uh, what we're going to start off with is, uh, how, how do you get interested into this uh, topic? Um, I got interested in the topic. Um, one of my um, interests from the time I was um, a little kid was the topic of UFOs. Yeah, which we're both interested in. Right. Many people on the show happen to be in the UFO club. You know, yeah. what a coincidence. Yeah. And, and uh, I sat there and I've heard stories uh, from many people about seeing things. I've never seen anything. I've never experienced anything. And I was wondering what this was all about. So I joined MUFON and became a field investigator. Mm -hmm. Did that for a couple of years, worked uh, in the database, did a lot of studying on the subject, and I could not find anything that really made me a believer. Um, it, it all seemed anecdotal to me, and so and I, it I, basically is all anecdotal. You know, yeah. everybody's like, you know, a lot of people are like, you have to have an experience in order. You know, there's that, that fine line. Once you, unless you have that experience, you're not going to be in, you know, the field. And yeah, stuff you're like. not but, the club. Yeah. But I'm in the same boat as you are. I've never really had an experience right. either. So. And so I sat there and I said, well, what could be causing people to be seeing uh, these things? And so I started looking at astronomical. Uh, information um, and cosmology, and I came across something called the electric universe theory. Hmm. And um, that absolutely fascinated me, because I've always had a problem with the standard cosmology's idea of um, and you, don't, you don't like the standard model where everything's it, mathematically sound, you know, you got all, you get basically a million variables and if they all fit together, that explains the universe, you know. That, and, and it would if, uh, if it did, but the problem is that um, the more we observe in the universe, the more questions there, there are, and they seem to come up with theories of, well, the universe is expanding. Why, where's all this energy coming from? We don't know. So um, We're going to throw in dark energy. Yeah, let's postulate dark energy and dark matter is, as something that's helping the universe expand. We've never seen it. We don't know what it is. And it's dark, so you can't yeah. prove that it's not there because you can't see it. And it makes but up. we can make a mathematical model that says it must be true, and then it's true. Yeah. Well, okay, maybe. Not only that, but it's 90, like 97% of the of universe. The universe. It's right. more than anything we've ever observed in our entire lifetime. And this is, it answers everything. Right. And <laughs> the problem is that you can't verify this scientifically. You can't do any scientific experiments to develop dark energy and dark matter because they don't even know what the heck it is. It's a postulate, yeah. you know. Um, and uh, when I started looking at the electric universe theory, I was sitting there thinking, electric plasma, things like that, plasma balls, you know, people are seeing... Um, Which does tie in the ufology, because right. a lot of people see these plasma balls out of nowhere, and they're like, uh, you know, what was that? Was that a UFO? It looks like, you know, it's unidentified, they don't right. know what it is. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, you know, maybe this is what it is. The, the, they had the earthquakes, and they, they produce the... the um, the ground lightning balls. You've got the lightning balls from the thunderstorms and things like that. Maybe that's what people are seeing. But then they're talking about hard, you know, crafts and, and being abducted and, and all this yeah, stuff. Taken and, physically from one place to another right. so it, that wouldn't be a cause from a naturally right. occurring plasma ball. Right. But um, in the process of, of trying to wrap my head around this experience that people are, are having, um, um, again, I came across the Electric Universe Theory, and it, it just fascinated me because they seem to answer a lot of the questions that uh, standard cosmology can't. Hmm. And it, it all starts with, with our concept of, of life here and, and who we are, and we, this is what we understand. Our reality is what we understand, so we have, throughout human history, um, expanded that to the universe. Um, and for the longest time, there were um, three states of matter that we understood, solids, liquids, and gases. Yes, not, not elements. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, they do form, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, all the elements are solids. Yeah, all the elements, gases. they can be in the three yeah. different states of matter. Yeah. Well, four different now, you know. Now, basically. right. Um, and then comes along uh, Sir Isaac Newton, and he explains um, the law of gravity. And so, well, I don't know if he explains it. Well, he, he mathematically wrote it out and said, Here, Ma yeah, here, mathematically here's what it is. He, he, explains, didn't say, 
how it works, not yeah. what it is. Nobody knows exactly what it is, right? But he mm -hmm. gave us uh, an e equation to, to um, describe it. I always, I always like to make the distinction. There. That, and that's a good distinction to make. Um, so you, you have um, humanity. We've had the three forms of um, matter. matter, and we have gravity. And you get into the 20th century, and Einstein comes up with the theory of relativity, and people took that, and they developed quantum theory, and um, gravity became the dominant power in the universe. It, it explains, um, supposedly, uh, how solar systems form through a uh, disk accretion into a star and planets yeah. around the star and all that kind of stuff. And that's the way we've um, understood uh, cosmology. Other than all the dark matter and dark energy that which, we talked about. Yeah, yeah, which all came out of the space age, just, because just, as we sent the, the satellites up and we went further and further out into the solar system and we uh, took the um, telescopes up and we got beyond the atmosphere and we saw strange things happening out there, um, we, they, we were saying, what the heck is this? You know? mm -hmm. And so they were trying to use um, gravity as the constant in the universe and forming their theories of what, why things are happening around that. Well, in the 20th century, we found another state of matter, and that is the electric plasma. Mm -hmm. um, the first three states of matter are basically um, electrons, protons um, in an electrically stable process. They come to form the elements, they come to form molecules, elements, and um, you know, yeah, rocks and, yeah. and gas and uranium. And yeah, you got the, the solid where everything's together, you mm -hmm. got the liquid where everything moves a little bit more, and then gas where everything's free to right. fill up any container, and then plasma is supposed to be the state after that. Once you heat it up to a certain point, the electrons become free to move, and it's a whole exactly. other Exactly, yeah, you have thing. free electrons, free protons, and they uh, float in um, uh, magnetic fields, and um, Christian Birkeland was one of the uh, primary founders of, of this idea because um, back at the turn of the 20th century, he was uh, a plasma physicist, hmm. and he was very interested in the aurora borealis, and he spent years taking his students out um, for a field trip to, to, to study what this was, what is it, where is it coming from, and he developed the theory that the uh, aurora borealis was actually energy coming from the sun, coming into the earth, and, and causing the lights that you see. And yep. he was scoffed for that. That, that. that couldn't be. Of course not. If other people haven't discovered it, you know, surely this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. And it turns out he was right. Well, and yeah. when we got um, satellites up into the Van Allen belt and around the earth, we found out we've got a magnetosphere, mm -hmm. um, which is a, a plasma sheath around the earth that protects us from the radiation of space, not only from the sun, but from cosmic rays. Yep. And um, we discovered that the sun is um, emitting a solar wind that uh, goes into space, and that when those particles leave the sun, the further they get away from the sun, the faster they go. Well, why would they be accelerating as, as they leave the sun? Hmm. The electric uh, universe uh, theory uh, purports that the sun is a positive anode. The planets, as in their orbits, are, are negative cathodes. The further you get away from the sun, the more negative the potential of the planet. And so that they draw the, uh, the energy, the solar wind, and they speed it up because the solar wind comes out in a positive state and it's rushing towards the negative state to try to equalize itself. Oh, so they kind of, they're basically attracting a lot of the right. stuff towards them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And another fascinating thing about the electric universe theory is um, they directly contradict the standard model of the sun. We understand the sun as a fusion reactor. Mm -hmm. Heat is, is uh, uh, produced in the core of the sun. It comes out of the sun and radiates into space. Yep. It gets mixed up with very complex uh, uh, magnetic waves that um, they say make the interior look cooler than the exterior. And because the surface yeah, of the sun is 6,000 yeah. you know, you know, uh, um, degrees 
I forget what it is, Celsius, but then the, the if corona. If we had Dave here, he would be able to yeah, rattle off yeah. these. Yeah, <laughs> the corona is millions of degrees, and that's, that's the outer yeah. atmosphere of the sun. Well, why is it cooler on the inside than the outside? The standard heat, model heat says. Heat rises, obviously. So standard you know model it's cooler says, than the right, it's, it's <laughs> magnetism, um, complex magnetic fields. And um, the electric universe theory uh, states that no, the sun is not a fusion reactor. The sun and all the stars and all the galax and galaxies and everything out there, they get their, um, their energy externally. Hmm. They get it through uh, the electric plasma. And they believe that the electric plasma in the universe constitutes that 97% of energy that um, we don't know about. This doesn't sound like a switch around, right? They're not just taking dark energy and being like, well, this is now plasma, and that's where all the energy is coming from. Well, you're talking about uh, a layman who's just getting into the subject, and you're talking about electrical engineers and plasma engineers who are doing experiments at places like Lawrence Livermore Laboratory mm -hmm. um, to um, uh, produce in the laboratory what they're seeing in the universe. There's a lot of scientific research going into these. They're, you know, yeah. it's not just... Uh, some guy spouting off one of his crazy theories. Exactly, you know? and, and the, the, the fact that they can back it up by laboratory experiments, which, That's a big which one. standard cosmology can't do. Yeah. Um, Same for string it, theory, just for the record, I'm throwing that out. That? String theory, they can't back, you know, it's, it's kind of the same thing that uh, you're talking about the standard model, but mm -hmm. I'd rather, I like the standard model a little bit more than string theory. Mm -hmm. String theory was kind of made up by some, you know, just scientists in the university doing what you're talking about, mm -hmm. nothing but math. They would come out, huge art board things, just equations wrote all the way down, and, you know, you flip through them. I had a whole book about, you know, mm -hmm. just, it's all math, no experimentation, mm -hmm. which that's not science, in my opinion. I mean, I don't see how they get away with it. Yeah, yeah, and, and some things in cosmology are reproducible. Um, so I'm not saying that nothing is. What I, my, my big problem with the two is that it seems like when they're talking in public, they're butting heads, they're fighting each other. Mm -hmm. There are two paradigms here, the standard paradigm of, of cosmology and the electric universe theory. And every time the electric universe guys are trying to describe what they're seeing, what they're finding in their experimental labs and stuff like that, and, and verifying um, this stuff, they start basking, bashing the cosmologists, saying, well, they won't listen to us, and, and they're stuck in their paradigm, and I think it's true, but I don't think telling them that is, <laughs> is you know, bringing us towards a unity. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's, there's um, correct uh, information in both of them, and that what the two sides really need to do is to come together work together, but and nobody likes working together. You well, know, it's, it's hard to do when you've developed a, a, um, your academic reputation on, on a theory. Yeah. And it, as a matter of fact, uh, Halton Art, uh, a famous astronomer, um, basically lost his standing in the American universities because he cataloged a series of strange galaxies. Um, and he wrote a paper and... Uh, what do you mean by strange galaxies? Galaxies that seem to be connected to quasars. And you know, quasars are the most bright, brightest, most distant things in the universe. Mm -hmm. And he found that by looking at uh, radio telescope uh, imagery and even um, uh, other spectrum imagery, he found nebula you know, or galaxies, um, big circular galaxies with tails that reached out to a quasar. Well, that can't be, because the quasars are way too far away. They can't be connected. But he said, here, look at this. Look at the magnetic lines. Look at the, uh, uh, the data. These two things are connected. Mm -hmm. How can that quasar be so far away? Yeah. And he wrote a paper, and uh, I, I, don't, I forget who he submitted it to, but the head of the institution said, wrote on the paper, this is beyond my imagination. Sent it back to his boss, and his boss said, can't get it published. And he, he uh, refused to just you know, give up on it and go the standard route, toe yeah. the standard line, and wound up uh, uh, working in Germany, uh, doing uh, astronomical observations from there and recording his findings. And what he ha uh, has postulated is that quasars are not as far away as the edge of the universe. 
quasars are young galaxies. Galaxies spit out new galaxies. Mm. Um, and you, you see the connection of the old galaxy to the new galaxy as it's being spat out. So then the, reason, the, the quasar would be there and it'd be spitting out that, that new universe. No, no. The no. galaxy is spitting out the, quote, the quasar, the quasar. Unquote. The, okay. the quasar isn't what you think it is. The quasar is actually a young galaxy coming out okay. of, of an old galaxy. And it's not as far away as you think because redshift doesn't necessarily have to equate to the Doppler shift. The hmm. further away something in is, the redder it is. Well, that's, that's true in the spectrum. But it can all, the redshift can also be a sign of age. Um, younger galaxies are much more energetic. They're going to be in the redshift because they've got a ton more energy than the old galaxies do. Hmm. And since these things are connected, he said, these aren't quasars. These are young galaxies coming out of old galaxies. And again, the cosmologists couldn't wrap their head around it. They said, no, it can't be. Um, but it does fit in the electrical universe paradigm. Um, so how does that work out exactly? Uh, well, it, it expands into the idea that... Um, Basically, uh, there's at least another effect other than gravity is, is what I'm getting. Okay, and that's a good point. Because if you put a metal ball on the table, mm -hmm. it's held down by the force of gravity that keeps it on the Earth. If you take a, 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 one of those old magnet horseshoes, you come over here, you go like this, click, you can pull it off the, the table and, yeah. and usurp gravity. Because the electric force. force is greater than gravity. The electric force is 100 billion, 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 billion times greater than the gravitational force. Sure, that's the right amount of billions? Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, 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 re, I rehearsed that yeah. last night. Okay. Yeah, it's that many times greater than the gravitational force with the understanding that the universe is actually full of, of uh, electric plasma, the predominant um, power in the universe is going to be electric, el the electric force, not the gravitational force. Yeah. Now, um, another thing that comes with electric uh, theory is that everything is interconnected. Like I said, the sun is getting its energy from the galaxies. The galaxies transmit their energy to each other. Everything connects to everything else electrically. You sound like a Buddhist right now. I'm just <laughs> saying, everything's part of everything. You know? And it, uh, the, it's now going down to... Are we talking about consciousness? <laughs> no, well, actually, they're, yes, they are there going go. that far. They're going down to the biological level. They're going to the uh, atomic and subatomic level. And they are even talking about consciousness. And again, you're going way, I, I'm an electronic technologist by trade mm -hmm. and electrical back and, and um, educational background. So, so that's, electricity that's, is your thing. That's way, yeah. And that's why, that's why I was able to wrap my head around this because this is something I understand and it makes sense and it answers holes in, uh, in standard cosmological theory. Um, like, like the pulsar. The pulsar is supposed to be a spinning neutron star, and it spins so fast that you get pulses of, of light in milliseconds. Mm -hmm. Nothing, first of all, neutrons cannot pack to that density. Nuclear theory says neutrons cannot pack to that density. It's, it's, it's impossible. Um, uh, but everything's possible with gravity, right? <laughs> if gravity was a str that strong a force, then yeah. I think we'd be sitting here like pancakes rather mm -hmm. than like we are. But um, the electric universe theory says you know, what you're probably looking at is binary stars acting as capacitors. The charge transfers from one star to the other, and that electric charge transfer can happen in milliseconds. They can be slapping that electricity back and forth and creating the radio waves and the light waves that you see in milliseconds. And it, it doesn't, you don't have to involve strange equations with neutrons that don't do things that neutrons can't do. It, it, it can be uh, proven in the, in the uh, laboratory elect, uh, electrically. I mean, we have oscillators that oscillate. Uh, you, know, you take a couple of capacitors, a resistor, and some electricity and put them in there, and you oscillate frequencies at, at milliseconds and things like that. These can be demonstrated in the laboratory. And, and that is a, a primary, of in primary importance to uh, the electric universe theorists because if you can't, like I said, so we, yeah, lost, we lost our model. way. Yeah, yeah, we lost our way when we stopped 
demonstrating what we thought we were seeing in the laboratory. And this came up with answers for you. Right. Okay. And most of these answers come out of mathematical models. And you can use mathematical models to explain things that do exist. You can explain things that don't exist because math, can, math is, is a language. Mm, especially when it comes to like statistics and stuff and you're looking at correlation between events, you know, it's like, well, just because they correlate doesn't mean that, you know, necessarily affect each other, you know. It, it could be, yeah, it, it, because you, you, you can prove something mathematically doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people I've talked to um, on the internet um, about electric universe theory who hate it uh, say, no, it's, it's proven. It's been proven mathematically. It's proven. That's, that's it. Mathematical proof. Yeah. End of story. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they believe that. They take that for fact. But now mathematical design leads to theory, leads to uh, possible explanations, not mm -hmm. the truth, not the answer, but a possible explanation. Yeah, for what's it's not going really on. empirical proof, which right. is where you get the experiments to right. you know, bring back, be like, well, if it's really that way, you should be able to reproduce. And, and that's really what the electric universe people want to do. They want to bring the science of cosmology back to an empirical state. Develop what you're seeing out there, prove it, and um, uh, they've been able to do that with the plasmas. You know those plasma balls you get at, at Spencer's? You, you put your hand on it and it creates the sparks. Oh yeah, I got a few of Stuff those. like that. I should bring them on the show. If, 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 you, if you put your hand on there and you look, you'll see that as the, the sparks come out, they, they fork like this. Mm -hmm. If you slowed the image down to like on a high speed camera, you'll find out that those are actually two currents and they twist around each other. Those mm -hmm. are Birkeland currents named after Christian Birkeland who was the father of plasma um, science and, and the theories that have expounded into the electric universe. Those Birkeland currents exist throughout the universe. Plasma exists in three states. Dark mode, you can't see it because electrons and, and protons are far enough apart that there's a very, uh, the density is, is very small. Dark energy. Bang. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. Now, seriously, I mean, you know, in, in dark <laughs> mode, you don't see plasma. But we found out that plasma is out there all over the place. Mm. It also, um, the next mode is the glow mode. That's fire. You light a, a fire in a, uh, in a, on a match, you're holding a plasma. That's glow mode. Arc mode is the other form, and that is lightning. Lightning is a plasma in arc mode. Now, you can take pictures of uh, um, star nurseries and nebulas, and what you see is you see strings of, of, of stars forming along. It's like a string of pearls, and you, you can see the Birkeland currents that, that twist through all those stars. Hmm. So they're and like connected. They're electrically connected in, in arc mode. You can see those. Um, the sun is electrically electrically connected to other stars in the galaxy, and they're all connected in um, a plasma in dark mode because the density isn't bright enough for, to, for us to see. We're not in a star nursery. We're not being created. But it's still, it's still plasma, plasma sure, right? right? Right. And the, the Birkeland currents come in at the north and south uh, poles of the sun. Mm -hmm. They heat the sun from the outside and uh, the sun cools as you get to the interior. Magnetos, it, it, everything, every planet and the sun, they all have magnetospheres. They yeah. have these. Uh, and so are they all kind of connected them. in the same way, just maybe in a lesser it, it amount? It can all be explained electrically. All right, so uh, if, if they, okay, so this is plasma that's actually connecting the stars, right? This dark right. plasma. So could, how, how are we able to uh, read it? How are we able, can we look at the sun and just be like, well, here you can see the dark plasma at the top where it's, hotter, right? Like, well, Actually, it's not a matter of heat so much as just um, electrical uh, energy transfer. Um, when, you, when you're talking about um, hot, that's one of the things that, that ma makes us suspect that the current is coming from the outside okay, because so, the corona is a million degrees, yeah, the surface yeah. is 6,000 degrees, and you go into the sunspots, it's even cooler. So we should but, be able to see some kind of, you know, like if it's connected to another star, there should be a tail coming off of it going to the other star, right? If of it, electrons. If it, if it was in glow mode, if the well, that's to see, yeah, visually. Mode. But I mean, if what if we put a satellite out there and measure the electro, you know, electrons? And, and that's what we need to do. 
Okay. Um, but that's just something we have. Again, got a, to, yeah. a problem we have in sending satellites out into space is we're we're trying to answer questions of the standard cosmological model. Yeah. We're not we're not thinking of the universe electrically. So we're uh, we want to go to. Uh, um, I guess technically we wouldn't have to do it on the sun if it's connected to the planets as well. We could do it on our own planet, right? And then just put a satellite out there, see if there's something there that the standard model doesn't explain, and then be like, bam, electric universe theory. Yeah, and I think there probably are a lot of things out there that um, the standard model doesn't explain. Um, I mean, you just add another variable and you tweak it a little bit, and bam, yeah. it's good to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, that's, uh, to me, that's making a lot more sense. It's answering a lot more of the questions. Okay, so we're getting down to the last minute here. I want to go jump really quick into the area you're not familiar with, the mm -hmm. consciousness, because we were talking about, I don't know if you listened too much about it, but the entangled particles, how people are connected like that. Does this somehow explain entangled particles, maybe? Does this? Oh, yeah. There, uh, when you go to the subatomic level, um, the atomic model says you've got electrons and protons and you get down to a point where the the molecules don't break down any further. Yeah, basically the quarks and everything. Well, but anyways, that's coming to the end of the yeah. show. And so uh, I'm going to have to thank you for being you here bet. as a guest, of course. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. And I hope you tune in next week to Spooky Action at Distance television show. <laughs>